Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today we're gonna be installing a new outlet for a microwave or range hood and a new dedicated circuit breaker that we're gonna wire through the attic on modern builds. For this project, we're gonna need a 20 amp breaker, an old work electrical box that can close around drywall, and a two plug outlet. I'm using 12-2 Romex for all of the wire and this tool right here called a fish tape, which is what we'll use to feed it through the wall. We'll need wire strippers, a utility knife, screwdrivers, a spade bit, a right angle attachment, which is really helpful but not necessary, and a 110-120 volt outlet tester. And finally, a power drill and an oscillating multi-tool with a wood cutting blade. So let's get started. We recently completed moving the electrical panel here to the outside of the house. This used to be in the spare bathroom where we're gonna be putting a new shower. But don't worry if your electrical panel is inside your house, all of this info still applies. And our very first step is to turn the panel off. P.S. I'm not a certified electrician, but my buddy Andy is, which is why I feel comfortable making this video. Only do electrical work if you feel confident and safe. Otherwise, call a pro. First step is to climb up into the attic and find the exterior wall that we want to feed our line down. And hopefully we've got enough room between the top plate and the roof to drill a hole to feed our wire. And I needed to be careful because there are a lot of trip hazards up here. So the top of the wall we need to get to is all the way down there. That's why adding a plug to an interior wall is easier because there'd be plenty of room in the attic to drill that hole. This will be close though. Let's get down there and see. All right, I can see the top plate. I'm putting an arrow to it on screen right now. It looks like there's just enough room I'll be able to squeeze in there with a spade bit, but no matter what, it's gonna be tough. Oh, Andy, say hi, certified electrician. First, we're gonna mask up. Let's get it. I'll try this with the traditional spade bit, but they also make flexible bits like this one if you're in an even tighter area than we are. I'm gonna use this cardboard, that way I'm not just laying down on the insulation. Hopefully that protects me a little bit. And okay, here we go. Really quick, I'm gonna audit myself and say I should have drilled this hole closer to the middle of the two by four instead of the edge. That's gotta be it. Whenever I tried to get my fish tape through that hole, I realized that I didn't get my bit through both of the two by fours. So then I got the right angle drill attachment, which I should have used from the beginning to get a more on center hole, and I was through. That fish tape is gonna feed down to our outlet. Glad that worked. Let's get out of here for a second. Whew. It's dusty up there. You can see I accidentally did a tiny bit of drywall damage. The initial angle I drilled out was a little too sharp, but we can work with this. Just a little extra drywall repair when we're done. Inside of my cabinet, I had a vague idea where I wanted my box to be, so I marked the outline with a pencil and then cut it out with an oscillating multi-tool with the plunge cutting wood blade. When it comes to outlet placement, just make sure that there's not a vertical two x four stud in between the hole that we just drilled through the top plate that our wire will feed through and the hole that we're cutting now for the outlet. In this shot, Andy's feeding the fish tape down the wall and I was able to grab it at that outlet cutout. And then we can connect our fish tape after we've unwrapped our wire about this much. We just wanna expose the black, white, and ground wire on the inside and fold back the black and white. And then we'll take the loop in our fish tape and we'll feed our ground wire through it. That way we can fold it over and it's not able to come loose. I also wrapped this connection in electrical tape so it can't snag while we pull it through. Then I went back up into the attic to pull that fish tape and wire up the wall. Oh, I see it. I got it. Woo. I made sure to pull more wire than we needed. Maneuvering around in this attic was tough, so I didn't want to find myself in the corner where I needed to be without enough material. Now I need to get the end of our Romex to the panel, which is in that corner of the attic, making sure I go underneath any of that ducting. Wish me luck. Really, I just wanted to avoid damaging this ducting by putting weight on it, but I was able to get the wire where I needed. I can see the hole where the other wires feed through the top plate. It's gonna be tough to get there. Let's give it a try. To find the existing hole in your top plate, just follow the wires that are already there in your attic and feeding down to the panel. We did it. Oh, hey camera. See if I can get out of here. <clears throat> if your panel is on the inside of your house, you might be feeding this right into your panel, or you might need to use a fish tape to get it from the attic into your box. But for us, we needed to feed it through the wall, through this transfer box, and then down to our breaker panel. This is the only extra step that's a little different with my box being on the outside of the house instead of on the inside. So then I screwed the cover back onto our weather tight outdoor junction box. 
and I went back into the house to pull the excess wire from inside of the attic through this hole that we're gonna put the outlet box in. I'm using what's called an old work box instead of a new work one, and this one doesn't have to attach to the two x four stud. Instead, it clamps around the drywall in the back of this cabinet. It's good to leave about six to 12 inches of Romex sticking out of the box. That way you've got plenty to use whenever you're wiring up your new outlet. I stripped my wire back about three quarters of an inch and then put a little loop on the end. And this is what's gonna go around the screws on our actual outlet. Always remember that the black hot wire connects to your gold connector on the outlet and the white wire connects to the silver one. Lastly, you'll notice that the wire loops clockwise around the screw. This helps tighten everything down. If the loop went the opposite direction, when I tried to tighten down the screw, it would try to unloop the wire. After tightening down the unused connections, I then folded my wires back into the box so that I could screw the outlet in place. And once your cover's on, the outlet portion of this project is complete. Check it out. We're microwave ready. And now we're gonna go back outside to the panel and wire up the breaker. But first, I wanna give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode, Squarespace. If you need a website, online store, or just a custom domain, Squarespace is your one-stop shop. And now, with Fluid Engine, Squarespace's next generation website design platform, it's never been easier to unlock your unbreakable creativity with their enhanced drag and drop technology on both desktop and mobile. Plus, if you start a Squarespace online store, there are no limits to the number of products that you can sell, whether that's a physical good, a digital good, or a service product. And if you wanna take payments in person, Squarespace has got you covered. By connecting the Square card reader to the Squarespace app, all of your sales, orders, and inventory inventory are up to date online and in person. Squarespace's designer templates look amazing. And if you want to build your own website, make sure and follow the link down below that squarespace.com slash modern builds, where you can create your own site before entering any of your credit card info. And then when it's time to make your website live, don't forget to use my code modern builds for 10% off your first site store or domain through Squarespace. One more huge thanks to Squarespace. Thanks to you all. And I'll meet you back out at the panel. Welcome back. Really quick, I just wanna remind everybody to turn your panel off before working in it. Even if you've done other tasks, someone else could have turned it on. I'm using a 20 amp breaker. That way I've got plenty of juice for the microwave vent hood combo that's going above my stove. And I'm gonna double check this is off while I'm working. And since we've got more wire than we need, we're gonna go ahead and bend it in place in the panel before we cut it to length. I stripped back all of the cover on this Romex. Make sure that you don't cut yourself with the utility blade while you do this and I uncovered the ground while I was at it. And now we'll strip this, this far. It's important to keep your wire routing as clean as possible. I tried my best. The black is our hot wire, and that's what gets connected to the breaker. In the panel, you can see the two 20 volt breakers have a black and white wire connected to the breaker. And that's how they combine together to create 220. But since we're using a 110, 120 outlet, we're gonna connect our white neutral to the ground bar. It doesn't technically matter where on your ground bar you choose to put your wire, but it is nice to put it next to the breaker that you're using. And the same goes for your ground wire. The black neutral goes right into the breaker. Just make sure to tighten it down, but not over torque it. I'm excited. Now let's turn our breaker on and the main panel, and we'll see if we did this right. Andy, what do you think? We gonna be okay? All right, main panel, back on, breaker. Nothing's happened yet. Let's go plug something in. This is a 110, 120 volt outlet tester. And if everything works right, we should have two yellow lights. Oh, it works. And so does the other plug. Super pro. Now that everything works, we can pull out a couple of slots in our breaker panel cover. That way we can stick it in place. And it is always best to go ahead and label this breaker now instead of waiting or accidentally forgetting. And we are now complete. Woo! Thank you everybody for watching. Another huge thanks to Andy for all of the help getting the panel out here and then getting this outlet for the microwave installed. And pretty much all of these rules apply if you've got a traditional foundation and you wanna go underneath your house. In fact, we're moving the laundry units to the garage and we did this to add a plug for them. Instead of drilling a hole through your top plate to feed the wire, you drill a hole through the bottom and then feed your Romex underneath the house. This was totally cramped, but I got some phone clips. And then once I found the holes that all the other wires fed to the panel through, I connected that 220 breaker along with a 220 dryer plug. 
If you've got a concrete slab foundation, this really isn't possible, but it is one of the upsides of having a wood framed subfloor with a crawl space underneath. Next episode, I'm actually putting in this microwave and I'm venting it through the ceiling and roof. I'm gonna make a whole video on that process. Seems like it's worth it. If that video is already out, it'll be on the screen and linked below or out in a couple days. Bye everybody. It's Mike's first flip.